the glories of mary by saint alphonsus liguri reflections on each of the seven dolors of mary in particular on the first dolor of saint simeon's prophecy in this valley of tears every man is born to weep and every one must suffer those afflictions that daily befall him but how much more miserable would life be if every one knew also the future evils which are to afflict him too unhappy would he be says seneca whose fate was such the lord exercises his compassion towards us namely that he does not make known to us the crosses that await us that if we are to suffer them at least we may suffer them only once but he did not exercise this compassion with mary who because god wished her to be the queen of dolores and in all things like his son and to see always before her eyes and to suffer continually all the sorrows that awaited her and those were the sufferings of the passion and death of her beloved jesus for saint simeon in the temple after having received the divine child in his arms predicted to her that this child was to be the mark for all the opposition and persecution of men set for a sign which shall be contradicted and that therefore the sword of sorrow should pierce her soul and thy own soul a sword shall pierce the holy virgin herself said to saint matilda that at the announcement of saint simeon all her joy was changed into sorrow for as it was revealed to saint teresa the blessed mother although she knew before this that the life of her son would be sacrificed for the salvation of the world yet she then learned more particularly and distinctly the sufferings and cruel death that awaited her poor son she knew that he would be contradicted in all things contradicted in doctrine for instead of being believed he would be esteemed a blasphemer for teaching that he was the son of god as the impious caiaphas declared him to be saying he hath blasphemed he is guilty of death contradicted in his reputation for he was noble of royal lineage and was despised as a peasant is not this the carpenter's son is not this the carpenter the son of mary he was wisdom itself and was treated as an ignorant man how doth this man know letters having never learned as a false prophet and they blindfolded him and smote his face saying prophesy who is this that struck thee he was treated as a madman he is mad why hear you him as a wine-biber a glutton and a friend of sinners behold a man that is a glutton and a drinker of wine a friend of publicans and sinners as a sorcerer by the prince of devils he casteth out devils as a heretic and possessed person do we not say well of thee that thou art a samaritan and hast a devil in a word jesus was considered as so bad and notorious a man that no trial was necessary to condemn him as the jews said to pilate if he were not a malefactor we would not have delivered him up to thee he was contradicted in his soul for even his eternal father in order to give place to the divine justice contradicted him by not wishing to hear him when he prayed to him saying father if it be possible let this chalice pass from me and abandon him to fear weariness and sadness so that our afflicted lord said my soul is sorrowful even unto death his interior suffering even caused him to sweat blood contradicted and persecuted in a word in his body and in his life for he was tortured in all his sacred members in his hands in his feet in his face and in his head in his whole body till drained of the last drop of his blood he died an ignominious death on the cross when david in the midst of all his pleasures and royal grandeur heard from nathan the prophet that his son should die the child that is born to thee shall surely die he could find no peace but wept fasted and slept upon the ground mary received with the greatest calmness the announcement that her son should die and peacefully continued to submit to it but what grief she must have continually suffered seeing this amiable son always near her 
hearing from him words of eternal life, and beholding his holy demeanor. Abraham suffered great affliction during the three days he passed with his beloved Isaac, after he knew that he was to lose him. O oh God, not for three days, but for thirty-three years, Mary had to endure a like sorrow. Like, do I say? A sorrow as much greater as the son of Mary was more lovely than the son of Abraham. The Blessed Virgin herself revealed to St. Bridget that while she lived on the earth, there was not an hour when this grief did not pierce her soul. As often, she continued, as I looked upon my son, as often as I wrapped him in his swaddling clothes, as often as I saw his hands and his feet, so often was my soul overwhelmed, as it were, with a fresh sorrow, because I considered how he would be crucified. Rupert the abbot, contemplating Mary, while she was suckling her son, imagines her addressing him in these words. A bundle of myrrh is my beloved to me. He shall abide between my breasts. Ah, my son, I clasp thee in my arms, because thou art so dear to me. But the dearer thou art to me, the more thou dost become to me a bundle of myrrh and of sorrow, when I think of thy sufferings. Mary, says St. Bernardine of Siena, considered that the strength of the saints was to pass through death, the beauty of paradise to be deformed, the Lord of the universe to be bound as a criminal, the creator of all things to be livid with stripes, the judge of all to be condemned, the glory of heaven despised, the king of kings to be crowned with thorns and treated as a mock king. Father Englegrave writes that it was revealed to the same St. Bridget that the afflicted mother, knowing all that her son would have to suffer, suckling him, thought of the gall and vinegar, when she swathed him, of the cords with which he was to be bound. When she bore him in her arms, she thought of him being nailed to the cross, and when he slept, she thought of his death. As often as she put on him his clothes, she reflected that they would one day be torn from him, that he might be crucified. And when she beheld his sacred hands and feet, and thought of the nails that were to pierce them, as Mary said to St. Bridget, My eyes filled with tears, and my heart was tortured with grief. The evangelist says, that as Jesus Christ advanced in years, so also he advanced in wisdom and in grace with God and men. That is, he advanced in wisdom and in grace before men or in their estimation, and before God, according to St. Thomas, inasmuch as all his works would continually have availed to increase his merit, if from the beginning grace in its complete fullness had not been conferred on him by virtue of the hypostatic union. But if Jesus advanced in the esteem and love of others, how much more did he advance in Mary's love? But, O oh God, as love increased in her, the more increased in her the grief of having to lose him by a death so cruel. And the nearer the time of the passion of her son approached, with so much greater pain did that sword of sorrow, predicted by St. Simeon, pierce the heart of the mother. Precisely this the angel revealed to St. Bridget, saying, that the sword of sorrow was every hour drawing nearer to the virgin, as the time for the passion of her son drew nearer. If, then, Jesus our King and his most holy mother did not refuse, for love of us, to suffer during their whole life such cruel pains, there is no reason that we should complain if we suffer a little. Jesus crucified once appeared to Sister Magdalene Orsini, a Dominican nun, when she had been long suffering a great trial, and encouraged her to remain with him on the cross, with that sorrow that was afflicting her. Sister Magdalene answered him, complaining, O oh Lord, thou dost suffer on the cross only three hours, but it is more than three years that I have been suffering this cross. Then the Redeemer replied, Ah, ignorant soul, what dost thou say? I, from the first moment I was conceived, suffered in heart what I afterwards suffered on the cross. If, then, we too suffer any affliction and complain, let us imagine that Jesus and his mother Mary are saying to us the same words. Example Father Roviglioni of the Company of Jesus relates, 
that a certain youth practiced the devotion of visiting every day an image of the sorrowful Mary, in which she was represented with seven swords piercing her heart. One night, the unhappy youth fell into mortal sin. Going next morning to visit the image, he saw in the heart of the Blessed Virgin not only seven, but eight swords. As he stood gazing at this, he heard a voice saying to him, that this sin had added the eighth sword to the heart of Mary. This softened his hard heart. He went immediately to confession, and through the intercession of his advocate, recovered the divine grace. Prayer. O oh, my blessed mother, not one sword only, but as many swords as I have committed sins, have I added to those seven in thy heart. Ah, my lady, thy sorrows are not due to thee, who art innocent, but to me, who am guilty. But since thou hast wished to suffer so much for thee, ah, by thy merits, obtain for me great sorrow for my sins, and patience under the trials of this life, which will always be light in comparison with my demerits, for I have often merited hell. Amen.